Um, you found out about this movie how? Um, my brother. My brother was called for the auditions uh, by Dilip Shankar sir, who's who's the casting director in my city. And um, so my brother and my mom kind of said that Suraj, you should go along with Cebu and just you know just as moral support. And he was nervous basically, and that's uh, that's kind of how I found out. And so I went for the 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 first audition, and I was sitting on the couch and. The lip sir came up to me and he said, Suraj, you, you're the appropriate age and you should give it a shot. Did and you have any acting experience? No. Like high school plays or anything? Well, I played a tree once. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Um, but I guess I got really lucky or something. I don't know. But things did worked out, I guess. Well, what did you have to do? Oh no, the first audition I just had to introduce myself and stuff. Then after that I had to do a readout of a survival manual. After that I had to do some scenes from the Pondicherry part where he he's chasing Anandi. And um, uh, the the when Pai first tries to train the tiger inside the, the, let the trumpets play. That. And the final audition... Uh, and this was the fourth audition, was um, in Bombay, I went, and that was the first time I met Daoyan. Uh, oh, I called the uh, Ang Daoyan. Why? Uh, 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 Daoyan's Mr. Director in Mandarin. Cool. And yeah, it's just a habit now. I, it's just what I do. Anyway. So you know Mandarin? Uh, well, a little bit, like, not much, just a little, just a little. I was there for a while, so I, I ended up picking up a little bit. In Taiwan? Mm-hmm. I see. So, so... All right, at the fourth audition, when you first met Ang Lee, Yeah, I was what? super nervous. Well, I, literally, so I forgot my lines. I did really badly. <laughs> and uh, that's when Daoyan kind of, in, uh, kind of uh, directed me for the first time. And he was talking to me for five minutes. He, he kind of made, made me put every character that I was talking about in some way related to my own family. So the mom was my mom, and uh, the brother was my brother, and uh, the sailor was my brother. Stuff like that. So he made it extremely real. And, you know, he made me go back and find memories that would make me feel the same emotion that I need to feel. And we did it the second time, and... I mean, I really don't know what happened, but I started crying, and... Well, not crying, but I was tearing up. And uh, I guess they seem to like it a little bit, and then Taiwan, yeah. So, one of the th I saw the movie again recently for the second time, and, and it just struck me how difficult it must have been to be buffeted and thrown water at and just be in this tank. I mean, just talk a little bit about the torture of it a little bit. Because there's this, and there's one scene in the movie that's just extraordinary where you're just standing there and they're throwing water at you. You're in the storm. It's at the end and you're just screaming. I mean, how the hell? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, we went through three months of training because I didn't know how to swim and all that. So I had to become stronger and... Yeah, more, yeah, because I, well, I am very skinny right now, but this is not skinny compared to what I was before. Like, I was a shrimp boy. You had such. to lose weight. Eventually. How did that work? How did you, where did you start and where did you end up and how did you time it out? Uh, I started gaining weight right from the moment I got to Taiwan, so I had to eat a lot. That was simple. We worked out a lot, learned how to swim, learned how to hold my breath, learned how to ski, sea skills, cutting fish, tying ropes, all sort of, sorts of things. Acting training. Uh, we did yoga every day, uh, both the mental part and the spiritual part and the physical, because you're physically so active, you need something to loosen you up because it gets a little very kind of intense. And um, so the training at that point was hard, but then later on when you look back at it, I know why I went through that, you know, because I probably wouldn't have survived <laughs> as such. Um, but most of the stunts parts so of the water and the wind, it was hard, but at the same time, it really helped because then I didn't need to act much. It was very real. And 
it was also in its own way, it was kind of fun. But you're playing opposite this ball, right? On a stick. What are you playing once on? Once or twice, yeah. What is Richard Parker to you there? Well, once Richard Parker, once or twice Richard Parker was a stick with a paper tiger three-dimensional head. Mm. Once it was a blue man mm -hmm. when Moving he's around. fighting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, once or twice it was a ball, but mostly it was nothing. Mostly it was air. So how did Aang help you with that? Well, he made me watch it. We had four tigers uh, in the airport being trained for reference for the CGI. So I'd watch them. I'd, I'd get an idea of how they move, how, how they react to water and the boat and the movement. Um, um, I'd watch videos of tigers. Like, basically, like, you'd see sometimes zookeepers coming and playing with tigers and they're all cute. And sometimes you'd see tigers jumping over elephants and taking men down. So you get an idea of how varied tiger tigers can be even though it's the same animal it's the same idea there's a real you know emotion at the end between you and this tiger mm. that we feel that's very powerful and very strong and maybe you could help me explain what is he really feeling and what is the reason that we feel such depth of emotion when that tiger walks into the jungle? Well, see, there are many ways you can look at because this movie has, I don't know how many layers. Daoyans da put many layers into this. So, there are some subconscious things, you know, somewhere inside, on one hand, it is the tiger, it is your, com on the outside, it's your, it's, it, see, Pai and the tiger were interconnected. You know, the tiger needed Pai for normal things like food, you know, and water and subsist subsistence and Pai needed the tiger to f first of all to be aware the tiger kept Pai aware and alive and awake you know and Pai kept uh, the tiger kept Pai sane you know loneliness is one thing that human beings are very weak against you know loneliness is one thing that you can be hungry for a really long time but if you're lonely you you can go insane so the tiger became an organizing principle that structured his life. Yeah, as such. But you can also see tiger, uh, the tiger as Pai. Because in many ways, the tiger is a part of Pai, essentially. It is... It is... Okay, it's kind of like this, you know. Everything kind of... The whole movie kind of talks about this in many ways. There are many things that human beings build up. Everything somehow just... Human beings find that need to define everything, put everything in boundaries, put everything under rules, and to give it, make it make sense as such. But if you cut away all of that, if you take it all down, you're left with something animal. You know. So in a way, Parker represents. It's one of the reasons we react to this: the uncontrollable nature. Mm -hmm. You know, the world that we we are not on top of. As the world we are aware of inside, but we don't want to be. Ah. You know, it's it's that part of you, of every human being has that part where that you're, well, not ashamed of, but scared of. Primal. Primal, I mean, you can put it in many ways, but it, it, it's, it, it, it's the reason we can't put it in any way is because it is a very irrational thing, you know. The fact that when the moment we start trying to define it, is when we're losing out on what we're trying to define. All right, so let me ask you this. Um, co controversially, I think, at the end of the movie, there are two narratives, as there were in the book. Do we need the second narrative? The, see, the thing is, uh, this is me saying this, the second narrative makes the movie in one way makes sense and one way it puts you in that it gives you it makes you suddenly think you know it makes you feel that there is a lot more going on than what we really see and in another way the first story is actually the symbol or it put you actually end up seeing the reason we need storytelling the reason we need that illusion you know many people think that illusion is something 
elusive. You just don't want it. It's something that you just do as a pastime, but actually we need it. You know, we need it to save ourselves from those horrifying things that happen in real life, you know. Now, are you going to go on to become an actor? I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know if I can act. But, um... You I, did it. <laughs> well, Daoyan... I mean, I, I was under Daoyan, and I had literally probably one of the best crews ever assembled. That's what I, I, what I believe. And we were like a family, you know. And did you ever break down? Yeah. Well, many times. I mean, it's actually kind of funny... All those crying scenes were little moments when I had got the chance to break down. So that it helps. helps. It helped, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.